Batman number 23 begins with Bruce attempting to survive an explosion in his apartment. Although he is able to, he is immediately captured by the Red Hood gang. The group works him over before their leader attempts to give him some final words. The leader brings up what a significant event the death of Thomas and Martha Wayne was in both of their lives. He also explains the character of the Red Hood gang, saying, We wear red to court the wolf. Rather than hide, eat us, we say, eat us all. He then shoots Bruce twice and leaves him to die in his fiery grave, yet Bruce refuses to give up. Wounded, he is able to escape to Wayne Manor before passing out. At Wayne Towers, Philip Kane, Bruce's uncle, is upset at Edward Enigma. Edward went against his wishes and sent the Red Hood gang after Bruce. Philip tries to restrain Edward, but his plan backfires and Edward parts ways with Wayne Industries. Philip does get one last jab off, criticizing Edward for always being someone's pawn. He is nothing more than an empty question mark. Back at Wayne Manor, Bruce wakes up and finds that Alfred has done his best to close his wounds. Bruce wanders to the deserted home, looking for answers on what he should do next. In his father's room, he comes across a holographic recorder that he had as a kid. When Bruce fell down a well on the estate, his father sent down the recorder to map the cave. Seeing the cave again gives Bruce inspiration. Almost on cue, a colony of bats flies in the room. With that, he turns off the device, leaving only him and the bat. We finally see the iconic moment where Bruce realizes that he must take on the image of the bat and, you know, fight crime. Yeah, I kind of like how they put a 21st century twist on it, though, with, like, the holographic projector. Yeah, it's kind of like a cliche moment. You know, Bruce just sort of sitting in the study, and he just sees the image of a bat, you know, in traditional bat lore. Well, a, bat, a real bat always comes in. Too. Exactly. But now, I, I, like you said, by putting a modern take on it, I think Snyder has made it a little less cliche. <laughs> Guess we'll have to wait and see till next issue to see what the original Batman suit really looks like and how he's going to put it together. So that should be exciting. But for this issue, the other important thing is that Edward Nigma seems to be, you know, taking steps towards becoming the Riddler. Yeah, dumps Philip Kane. We all sort of saw that coming. We knew he was working with the Red Hood Gang as well, but he sells out Bruce. He does. I like the one line Kane had to him where he basically says, you're just going to be hiding behind a question mark. And I thought that was a great thing to say to someone who will eventually become the Riddler. It was kind of convenient that Philip Kane's head contained a metal plate and <laughs> the floor was magnetized. That seemed like a dangerous thing for Kane to even put into place, you know? At the beginning of the issue, though, we saw a little bit more of the Red Hood gang trying to blow up Bruce on Edward Enigma's, I, I don't know if it's orders or suggestion, but uh, there were some pretty cool moments. Bruce surviving was pretty badass. This establishes right away that Bruce, at this point, could withstand basically any beating. He was shot, he's left for dead, he crawls his way all the way to Wade Manor, breaks inside, you know. He, he still needs Alfred to help him, though. It's true. And like always, Alfred's there to patch him up, and he says that, I'll always be here to patch you up, you know. One of the first and many times to come. I also kind of liked the talk that the Red Hood Gang leader had with Bruce. He tells them, we wear the Red Hood to court the wolf rather than hide. Eat us, we say. Eat us all. And I think Bruce basically just ends up stealing that kind of idea from them. That's what Batman is. It's a symbol that courts the wolf, the wolf being all the evils and horror in Gotham, and makes himself a target to protect innocence. That's true, but in a way... He's also trying to scare the wolf in this... He's scaring the wolf back. Yeah, I mean the Red Hood gang, by just being so large, it's trying to come up to the wolf in like an e e equal footing, you know, take it punch for punch almost. Um, no, it's very interesting to take a look at that symbolism. I really like how S Snyder always puts stuff like that in there. Yeah, because another major overarching theme in this zero-year arc has been Bruce A didn't want to reveal that Bruce Wayne was back in Gotham. Yeah. And he wanted to wear a mask, but he didn't have, like, a sufficient mask yet. You know, he's wearing, like, tearaway faces. Yeah, he didn't have a real symbol. symbol. Yeah, exactly. Another thing I liked between the Red Hood Gang talk with Bruce was that uh, they talked about how the Wayne uh, family's murder was, like, a defining moment in the leader's life. Uh... After that point, his life changed. And I thought that was very interesting because 
You know, it's like a historic landmark when, you know, when it happens in someone's lifetime, you think back and say, you know, where was I when this happened? Yeah. And in Gotham's history, the death and murder of the Waynes in Crime Alley is such a defining moment that people can look back and say, I was here when this happened, and this is what happened to my life afterwards. Well, I think that's supposed to be like the start of a dark age in Gotham that doesn't end until Bruce Wayne returns and becomes Batman. And Batman's like the dawn of a better era. Exactly. So that was one defining moment. And now when Bruce is going to become Batman, that's going to be the next thing where people are going to be maybe 10 years down the line, 50 years down the line. Like, where was I when Batman first showed up in Gotham and made a difference? Took down the Red Hood gang. As a great deal for Batman number 23, what would you give it? I'd give the issue a 3.5 out of 5. It was actually a rare issue by Snyder that didn't have many words, but Capullo's art really conveyed the low point in Bruce's zero year very well. I'm going to give this issue a 4 out of 5. I think it's the best issue of zero year yet, and I can't wait for Batman to suit up in the next issue. Thanks for watching B3 Comics review of Batman number 23. Before we go, we have a question for you. In this issue, we brought up iconic moments in Gotham history. We want to know from you guys, what are some iconic moments in the history of the DC Universe? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up.